the live-action adaption of Avatar The Last Airbender has begun production in Vancouver, Canada, according to Netflix. There's lots to look forward to, although the original creators are no longer connected with the Netflix live-action Avatar project, including fresh cast announcements and more. Here's an updated guide to everything we know about Avatar The Last Airbender's live-action Netflix series. The animated series co-created by Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Kinetsko was one of the most successful cartoons of the mid-2000s. In 2012, the series produced The Legend of Korra, an equally successful spin-off series that is now airing on Netflix in the majority of areas across the world, but is likely to depart eventually. Will it follow its original story? The live-action remake's narrative will follow the same adventures as the cartoon version. The original series was divided into three seasons, or books, with each having 20 episodes. The program may follow this pattern, with three seasons following the events of the first, possibly with lengthier episodes, and skipping over the lesser one-shots. Perhaps The Great Divide, anyone? With that, here's what we know about the plot. Civilization is separated into four distinct countries in Avatar, the last airbender's universe. The Air Nomads, Earth Kingdom, Fire Nation, and Water Tribes are the four countries named after the elements. Only a fellow known as the Benders in each nation can use their nation's elements by combining regional martial arts and telekinetic abilities. The Avatar is the only person who can use all four elements. The Air Nomad's most revenant avatar is Aang. Aang is revived by Katara and Sokka of the Water Tribe after sleeping for 100 years in the Avatar state. Aang, with the assistance of his new allies, must acquire the talents of the remaining elements in order to establish harmony among the countries after learning of the Fire Nation's conflict scorching the Earth. Cast In August 2021, the first four members of the cast were announced. Gordon Cormier will play Aang, Kia Wentio will play Katara, Ian Owsley will play Sokka, and Dallas Liu will play Prince Zuko. This news is fantastic, not only because it appears that the show's major characters won't be getting any older, but also because the casting is about as diverse as we could wish for. Netflix has been particularly interested in casting individuals of color. Shyamalan's film was attacked not just for being terrible, but also for having a predominance of white actors in the cast. The program takes place in sprawling globe influenced by East Asian, New World, and Inuit influences, none of which are populated by white people. In a statement from 2018, original series co-creators Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Konetsko were quite explicit about this. We can't wait to realize Aang's world as cinematically as we always imagined it to be, and with a culturally appropriate non-whitewash cast. It's a once-in-a-lifetime chance to build upon everyone's great work on the original animated series and go even deeper into the characters, story, action, and world building. According to Konetsko, he was seeking for a way to include Dante Bosco, one of the most well-known voice actors in the game and the man who voiced Zuko in the original show, in the remake somehow. Bosco also repeated his part in Avatar's sequel series, The Legend of Korra, although he won't be reprising his role in the remake, which he will not portray. In February 2021, the Illuminati announced, while this has not been confirmed, that Katara would be the older sister aged 16 and her brother Sokka would be 14. At 12, Aang will remain mostly unchanged. A lot of character backstory could be changed, according to a series of casting descriptions obtained by entertainment site The GWW, including adding in an adoption narrative to Aang's childhood and having Fire Lord Ozai pit him and Zuko against each other for some project. It all sounds fake and bad and nothing has been confirmed by Netflix, so hopefully this is just one of those rumors that will eventually fade. Others involved in making the series the fact that the original creators of the Nickelodeon series will be involved was the most thrilling news early on in the project. That's in contrast to Nickelodeon's earlier live adaption of Avatar The Last Airbender, which was universally criticized in 2010. Unfortunately, 
the project's original creators, Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Konetsko, who were to serve as executive producers and showrunners, left in mid-2020 due to personal reasons. But we'll get into more of that later in the video. Along with his company, Rideback, Dan Lin is listed as an executive producer. The Sherlock Holmes films, the Lego movies, and the IT films are just a few of the other major projects Rideback has worked on for Warner Brothers. Avatar The Last Airbender's showrunning duties have been taken up by Albert Kim. The work on TNT's Leverage and Nikita made Kim famous. Ryan Halperin and Lindsay Liberatore are also mentioned as producers, with Rideback Productions serving as the project's principal production film. Rideback recently sold off another project to Netflix in the form of Parallel. According to IMDb Pro, Jang Cho Lee will work on the series as a concept designer, with past credits including Big Hero 6, Tangled, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, and Beowulf. The series was also produced by Mark David Alpert at one time. Mark's outstanding resume includes work on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Lethal Weapon, and Nikita. Roseanne Liang and Jabbar Hassani will be new directors for the Avatar The Last Airbender series, and this was revealed alongside the cast announcements. Despite the fact that the first book involves a number of crucial bouts with significant choreography, Avatar News learned of a massive recruiting process searching for Asian and Indigenous actors with martial arts or dance backgrounds in October 2021. Why did the original creators leave Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender? Now, we're going back to the original creators. As you may recall, in August 2020, we learned that the project's two original developers had split ways due to alleged artistic disagreements. Michael Dante DiMartino sent an open letter about this resignation from the project. The key paragraph is as follows. When Brian and I signed on in the project in 2018, we were hired as executive producers and showrunners. In a joint announcement for the series, Netflix said that it was committed to honoring our vision for this retelling and to supporting us on creating the series. And we expressed how excited we were for the opportunity to be at the helm. Unfortunately, things didn't go as we had hoped. On Instagram, Brian Konetsko also made a statement. Here are a few significant points from the statement that we'd like to share. Though I got to work with some great individuals, both on Netflix's side and on our own small development team, the general handling of the project created what I felt was a negative and unsupportive environment. Since their departure, both have stated that they would be helming new animation projects in the Avatar world at Paramount Plus under the name Avatar Studios. More criticism of Netflix's concept for the series has surfaced since the departure of the creators. D. Bradley Baker, who played Appa and Momo, didn't mince words regarding Netflix's goal to effectively reproduce the Nickelodeon series. Current production for the series It was originally reported back in late 2018 that full production would start in 2019. However, that didn't happen two years later for a variety of reasons, one of which being the departure of the original developers, the other being COVID-19. Brian Konetsko posted some old storyboard images for the first animated series in September 2019, and it's possible that he'll use them as inspiration for the new season. Jan Chol Lee, who works on the series as a concept designer, is among the other staff members that have been disclosed. Working on Disney's Big Hero 6, 2006's Beowulf, and Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs were among his past credits. Some images containing concepts and early filming photographs were shared in early September 2019, however, they have since been refuted. Production Weekly reported in October 2019 that a program was still in development and the production will begin in 2020. However, as of January 2021, it's unclear whether this is still the case. The original creators left the project in August 2020, thus production is still up in the air, which we may presume indicates it is still early in the process. Manufacturing will begin in Vancouver, Canada, and although being stated as beginning many times, multiple sources currently predict that production will begin in November 2021 and run through April 2022. Trade Winds is the working title for the show that is currently being shot. Avatar The Last Airbender is currently in development as of November 16th, 
In addition to the confirmation that production has begun, the parts of Gyatso, Uncle Iroh, and Commander Zhao have now been filled. Release Date As of now, the release date is still unknown. Given that production on the program isn't scheduled to begin until at least November 2021, we're anticipating a release date in late 2022 or perhaps even 2023 at this time. And now that's a wrap. Are you looking forward to Avatar The Last Airbender? What are your expectations for the series? Let us know in the comment section down below. We hope you guys liked this video as much as we enjoyed making it. Stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.